So kelp can be an amazing biostimulant, but it has a lot of dangers that you should be aware of. There are typically two types of kelp inputs. There is kelp meal and then there's seaweed and kelp extracts. The meal is usually a dry solid amendment that comes from harvested seaweed. And it's usually rinsed. It's usually rinsed. Well, sometimes it's rinsed. It's dried and then milled. As an input, it usually only has around 1% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus or almost no phosphorus and about 2% potassium. And it has a very small amount of calcium and some trace minerals as well. Kelp and seaweed extracts are typically liquid, which are processed into a concentrated biostimulant. The NPK ratios are usually near zero, although there are some products that have about 1% nitrogen. These are usually applied at very low rates because the goal is to bring in the bioactive compounds and not necessarily nutrition. For the extracts, there's typically two types of extraction methods. One is heat alkaline extraction, which can often depolymerize some of the bioactive compounds like the polysaccharides and alter the bioactive composition. And then there's enzymatic hydrolysis, which helps to improve or selectively recover a lot of those bioactive compounds. When we're looking at kelp as a fertilizer, it doesn't have a high percentage of macro, secondary, or micronutrients. It typically sits around 1% nitrogen, almost 0% phosphorus, and about 1.5% to 2% potassium. It also contains about 1.5% calcium and about 2% sulfur. It also has trace amounts of boron, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and molybdenum. But the exact numbers are highly variable depending on where it was grown and how it was harvested and processed. As a fertilizer, it doesn't really move the agronomic needle or supply adequate nutrition, but it can be used in addition to other inputs. When we're thinking about the bioactive compounds in kelp, it's not realistic to list every single compound because there's hundreds, but there are major functional groups that are usually discussed in scientific literature. The bioactive compounds include polysaccharides and oleosaccharides, alginate, which is a gel forming molecule that can influence water relations and soil aggregation. And I also wanna mention that those compounds are also found in aloe. Kelp also contains some phenolic compounds, some antioxidants, some plant growth regulators like auxin, cytokinin, and gibberellin. And because it is plant-based, it will contain some minerals, organic acids, and of course, carbon. A lot of these biostimulants are not just having a direct effect on plants, but are also having an indirect effect through the stimulation of microbiology or through the improvement of soil structure and cation exchange capacity. These indirect benefits are often expressed as increased root architecture, resilience to stress, and induced resilience through priming molecules. So although there are a bunch of benefits to kelp, there's also a bunch of dangers that can negatively impact your soil, your soil's microbiome, and your plants. Kelp meals oftentimes contain high sodium and chloride levels, which can spike soil salinity and, le and electrical conductivity, and high salts increase osmotic stress on both plants and microbes and can cause depressed growth rates. Excess sodium, especially in sodium affected soils or when used with irrigation water that has high sodium levels, that combination can seriously antagonize calcium uptake, magnesium and potassium uptake and the availability of all of those nutrients. And then excess chloride has a negative interaction with other soil nutrients and can be directly phytotoxic to a bunch of different plant species. Kelp and seaweeds have also been shown to bioaccumulate a lot of the elements, including heavy metals, from their environment. The science shows that high levels of cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and lead oftentimes appear at sometimes toxic and dangerous levels. Heavy metals can inhibit microbial enzymes and shift microbial communities, and they can also accumulate in soil over time depending on the dose and frequency of application. Bioavailable heavy metals can end up contaminating a lot of that plant biomass, and so we want to make sure we're not introducing heavy metals whenever possible. It's really only realistic to use kelp or kelp extracts in small quantities and as a supplement 
for its biostimulating effects, not as a complete fertilizer or a complete soil amendment. You want to avoid heavy kelp applications because it could potentially spike your soil or media EC. It could spike your sodium and chloride levels and it could bring in dangerous heavy metals. So to wrap things up, kelp has been scientifically shown to work to improve soil structure, to stimulate the soil's microbiome, and to improve plant performance. However, it's important to remember that sourcing high quality inputs and doing your due diligence to test these products for heavy metal contaminants as well as unwanted nutrient ions, it's best used as a trace mineral and biostimulant additive and not as a fertilizer input.